welcome my friends. We're going to uh, work our way through the normal distribution curve. Now we're going to move in little steps. We're just going to walk a step at a time and cover a topic at a time in order to get you there. This is like climbing a ladder. And I think you're going to enjoy that climbing a ladder analogy soon with some very special music. Now, this might be subtitled, uh, Draw Me a Picture, and it is primarily titled, What Does the Standard Deviation Look Like? Well, you know, there's an old adage that one picture is worth a thousand words, and whoever wrote that must have been a visual learner. You will recall that according to Gardner's multiple intelligence theory, there are numerous types of intelligences, and uh, on the artistic intelligence, I came up short. Uh, keep in mind as you watch this that uh, on the Draw a Man IQ test, I come up regularly profoundly retarded. So bear with me, I mean well. Consider uh, as we think about standard deviation some of the following things. The standard deviation provides insight into how widely the data are scattered around the mean. Now before we really get into this, let that sink in just a moment. What is the mean? Well, is the population mean or the sample mean? Doesn't matter. The population mean or numerical average has data scattered around it, and the sample mean or numerical average has data scattered around it. The standard deviation provides insight into how widely the data are scattered. Well, where's the stinking picture? Hold on. Be patient. Let's consider this little curve just a moment. Isn't it beautiful? I just love its little lavender purple color and the little lines down across the bottom. This curve might be said to represent a population of data. Perhaps it represents a sample of data. For our purposes, we're going to use a population, even though it really doesn't matter which we view it from. Now, the curve indicates to us that by going up high in the center, that most of the data are congregated in the middle of this distribution. And far out on the left end and far out on the right end, there are not many of them. Aha, here is the infamous mu. Remember that the Greek letter mu stands for the population mean. If I had not told you this represented a population distribution of data, and you had seen the letter mu, you would immediately know that it is a population distribution. Remember, mu is a measure of central tendency. Central tendency is a middle value. So now we have mu in the middle and is recognized in this curve. Notice some neat things about the distribution. Because mu is in the middle, one half of the distribution lies to the left and one half of the distribution lies to the right. Mu exactly divides the distribution in half. Now a big red circle appears. That circle is intended to indicate to you that most of the data congregate around mu. Out on the far left, we have some extremes, and out on the far right, we have some extremes. Now I have placed numbers in here for you to look at. Mu in the middle at 20. The standard deviation is 2. That means if we drop down one standard deviation below the mean, it would be 20 minus 2, or 18. Two standard deviations would be 20 minus 4, which was 16. Three standard deviations below the mean would be 20 minus 6, or 14. One standard deviation above the mean is 22. Two standard deviations above the mean is 24. Three standard deviations above the mean is 26. Isn't this awesome? Now look at this curve. The standard deviation in this curve tells us how scattered this curve is. See, the, the mean is in the center, but the standard deviation pulled that curve out to the left, out to the right, trapping so many data between so many standard deviations. Now you'll get more of this to come. I'm just trying to get you used to the terminology. Mean is the measure of central tendency Standard deviation tells us about the scatter. What happens if the standard deviation is lowered to 1? Now then we have a curve that is still centered on 20, but it is much more tightly compacted around 20 because the standard deviation is smaller than the standard deviation was in the other curve. Let's look at some pictures and see if we can see this now. 
In this top curve, we have mu equal 20, standard deviation equal to 2. In the bottom curve, we have mu equal 20, standard deviation equal to 1. Now look at these two curves. They're exactly centered on 20. One of them is wider because its standard deviation is larger. One of them is narrower because its standard deviation is smaller. The wider, the larger the standard deviation, the wider the scatter of the data, the smaller the standard deviation, the smaller the scatter of data. Standard deviation is a matter of scatter of the data. Now, another phrase for standard deviation, you remember, is variance. Variance, you just take the standard deviation and square it. In the top curve, the variance is 2 squared or 4. In the bottom curve, the variance is 1 squared or 1. Variance and standard deviation are actually the same measure in different forms. Some folks in statistics will tell you that there are only two relevant primary statistics in, in the whole all of the statistical research. They are the mean and the standard deviation. Others will come along and tell you, well, they are the mean and the variance. Since standard deviation is the square root of the variance, these terms mean and imply the same thing. Both of them speak about the scatter of the data. So, you know, when you're talking about there being only two real meaningful uh, descriptive statistics in the statistical research being the mean and the variance, or saying it's the mean and the standard deviation, you are actually saying the same thing. A large standard deviation means a lot of scatter. A large variance means a lot of scatter. A small standard deviation means a small scatter. A small variance means a small scatter. Now you know all, you're ready to move on.